if you use unified devices, you may know it's very easy to capture network frames for a switch part. For example, for this unified switch for part 5, I can configure it to mirror part 26. And then I can run a Wireshark machine against this part so that I can monitor the part 26 traffic. Right? It's very easy to configure. However, what if what you want to capture or monitor is inside the gateway? Because not all the network traffic for the gateway is exposed on the physical parts of a gateway. Let me show you what I mean. For example, this UDM Pro, if I run command IP link, you can see there are totally 37 interfaces for my case. Most of them are internal to the gateway. If you simply monitor the physical parts of this UDM Pro, you will not see those traffic. Then if you do want to monitor those packets or capture those packets using Wireshark, how you can do that? That's what we are going to talk about in this video. I'm going to have a dedicated video just focusing on capturing the one part traffic. So in this video, I'm only going to discuss in general how you can capture packets for your internal gateway traffic. I will first discuss what if you are comfortable by using TCP dump only without the help of Wireshark, how you can monitor the traffic. Then we will talk about, yes, you can use TCP dump to capture the packets and then view it using Wireshark offline. Then we will discuss how you can use the new feature of the Unified Gateway to do packet capture. Then you can use Wireshark to view the captured packets. Later we will discuss what if you want to use Wireshark to monitor the internal gateway traffic in real time. The last part is how you can use the SSH dump feature of Wireshark to capture the traffic in real time of your remote system. Okay, let's get started. In the lab environment, I have a UDM Pro as the gateway and then a VLAN 10 client connected to a unified switch. In the unified network controller, you can see I have very simple network configuration and the VLAN 10 is one of the configured VLANs. Then in the lower part SSH session, let me SSH to UDM Pro. To monitor the traffic, for example, if I want to see VLAN 10 specific traffic, I can simply run TCP dump, then use parameter I to specify the interface name. So for VLAN 10, it's bridge 10 interface name. If I want, I can furtherly provide more filters. For example, I can say part 53, which means I'm only interested in DNS queries. So then let me run it. Okay, so now TCP dump is monitoring the traffic. Then in the left side virtual machine, from VLAN 10, let me simply do some DNS query. Let's say I did x.com. Okay, it's successfully done. Then in the right side, you can see I successfully got the two packets dumped. The first one is from my VLAN 10 machine visiting the gateway doing the DNS query about x.com. Then the second packet is from the gateway reply to the VLAN 10 machine about the DNS query result. Okay, very simple, very straightforward, right? If you want, you know what? Let me kill the dump. For interface, instead of specifying a specific one, I can say any. So in this way, I will monitor everything, all the traffic within the gateway. And then let's say I still want to see part 53 traffic. Let me write. See, now I haven't done any testing yet. There are already some traffic dumped. It's because of the gateway is also doing the frequent DNS queries for internet monitoring. Okay, if I do the dig command again from VLAN 10. This time, let me try, let's say, mbc.com. See, a lot of things are captured. Let me stop it. Starting from this one, you can see it's hitting this VLAN 10 interface querying about MBC. And then the traffic goes to the bridge 
for VLAN 10 and then goes to the physical one part, the primary one part to visit 9999 for the DNS query and then the traffic will go back to the virtual machine, right? Just on the screen, you can already see the complete traffic flow which happened inside the gateway, right? For DNS, this way may work fine because the query and the reply is very simple. You can easily interpret and read them from the screen output, right? But if you want to monitor more complicated traffic, more complex flows, this way may not work fine simply because the tool you are relying on is simply on screen text display. Apparently, it's much worse than Wireshark, right? Let's go to the next part. Let's see how we can capture the packets and then view it in Wireshark. In the second scenario, let's see how we can use the same method as in previous scenario, but view the results using Wireshark from the SSH to UDM Pro, let me run this command. So basically it's the same way I use TCP dump and I specify any interfaces. Then I restrict on port 53 and here I say write, which means write to a file and dash U means it won't buffer after each packet. Then here I use a pipeline to output the data to this local file. Then when I do the TCP dump, I want it not only to dump a file, but also show it on screen. So that's why this part is optional. I simply use another pipe to use another TCP dump incidence just to read this file and output on the screen. Okay, so in this three commands pipeline, I achieve what we want. First, dump the packets I want. Second, write to a file. Third point, display on the screen. Okay, let me run it. Then you see the similar output as previous scenario, right? In the left side from the VLAN 10 machine, let me do a dig again. Let's say SpaceX. Okay, done. Then kill the TCP dump. If I list the local file, you can see this file is there because of our command. So now the next step for us to somehow transfer the file to our local machine so that we can use Wireshark to view it. You can easily use SCP, which is based on SSH to transfer the file. Let me show you. So exit the SSH. Now I'm in the local Wireshark machine. Simply run this command. I will SSH to the UDM Pro and copy this file to my local machine. That's the simple SCP command. Here I need to use my SSH password. Okay, see the file is transferred. It's about 3 KB. Then I'm ready to use Wireshark to open it locally. Okay, I already opened Wireshark. Let me open the file I just transferred. Don't be too happy because we have a problem here. See here, it only shows the default column layout, which means you have the source destination, but notice what's missing. Let me go back to the SSH. So this is the original TCP dump output, right? See, the very crucial information is this column, which shows the interface name because the same packet will go through multiple interfaces. So you need to know for each packet is going through which interface. However, if you go back to Wireshark, that information is not displayed. In fact, the information is in the captured file. It's just by default, Wireshark doesn't show it. For example, if I click the very first packet in the packet details for this second section, which is Linux cooked capture v2, which is the section added by TCP dump. If we expand it, see this field is what we need. It says interface index. You have a number. The way to add this field to the column is you can simply right click on any example packet. Then see here, apply as column. Okay, so then you have a new column here. If you are not happy with this column layout, you can right click on it and say column preferences. Then you drag this new column all the way up 
as the second column. Okay, you see now you have the second column, which is the interface index, right? Even though now you have this column, you may still not understand what it really means because you simply see different numbers, right? In fact, this number is the dynamic interface number in UDM Pro. Let me show you SSH to UDM Pro again. Let me run IP link command. See, for each interface, the very first information is a number. That's the interface index. It's dynamic. It's not hard-coded. Depending on your configuration in your UDM Pro, you may have different numbers for your interfaces. You have to go back to SSH to find it out which number is corresponding to which interface. Let's go to the display, index number 3, index number 34, right? Let me use this two index number as example to show you how to understand the numbers, 3 and 34. Go back to SSH, see what's 34? 34 is our VLAN 10 bridge. What's 3? 3 is Ethernet 9, which is the primary one part. Okay, in this way, we can understand what really happens. Then the next thing is just to use the user-friendly powerful UI of Wireshark to analyze your captured packets. Okay, in this way, in three steps, we successfully achieved what we want for this scenario. Okay, let's move on. If you don't want to use command line, you may want to try the new feature from Ubiquiti. So if you go to devices, click on UDM Pro, see here, there's a button called packet capture. Click on it. You can select a network. For example, let me choose VLAN 10. Then let me use the default 30 seconds start capturing. While it's running in the lower part, the Linux virtual machine, let me dig x.com. Okay, it was successful. Then wait for the 30 seconds to pass. Okay, the button changed to download file. Click on it. Okay, file downloaded. Then we can open the file locally using Wireshark. However, this feature is very buggy. You can see I already opened the file. The file has zero byte size, which means it didn't capture anything. And even if you are lucky, you get the captured frames back. If you revisit the packet capture dialog, you can notice there are limitations. So you cannot specify multiple interfaces. You have to choose only one. And then if you make the duration too long, the system may report error. So it doesn't work all the time in all the cases. It's very limited. So I personally prefer the command line SSH way. Okay, let's move on. All the previous methods, yes, they work, but they share a common shortcoming, which is the Wireshark viewing is not real time. So you have to first capture the file using TCP dump to a file, and then you view the file using Wireshark offline. How you can achieve real time capturing and viewing in Wireshark, we can rely on Linux pipe. In the lower part, Wireshark machine. Let me run this make FIFO. So basically what I'm doing is I create a special first in first out file. The name is test. It will be a named pipe. So let me run it. Then go back to Wireshark, click this start capturing button and click on manage interfaces. Click on the pipes tab, then add a new one. I need to input the file I just made. So go back to terminal. Let me see what's the current path. Okay, it's under home HZ. Go back to Wireshark. Then for pipe path, let me use home HZ test. Okay, then make sure I only select this new interface because by default, the first interface is also selected. So I need to make sure I only highlight this new interface. Then click start button. Okay, you see the capturing has started, but nothing's captured. The reason is there's nothing feeding into the named pipe yet. So let me go back to terminal. Let me run this command. So what I'm saying is let me SSH into UDM Pro. 
Then run the command inside the double quotes, which is TCP dump command, right? And I will write the result to a file to capture all interfaces with this filter. Then at the end, I redirect the result to the named pipe. So the remote TCP dump will output to this named pipe in my local machine. That's the magic. Okay, let me run it. Okay, here I need to input my SSH password to UDM Pro. Okay, the familiar TCP dump, right? Then if we go back to Wireshark, see Wireshark is already capturing packets in real time. In the left side VLAN 10 machine, let's validate the capturing is indeed in real time. Let me dig x.com. See, in the right side, we captured the DNS query, right? You can see we even have this interface index column, which is the result of our previous testing, right? So we have everything. We have all the information we could get using previous methods and with a huge advantage, which is we are seeing the captured packets in real time. That will be really, really helpful. Okay, personally, I really like this approach. Let's move on to the very last scenario or method for this video. Even though the previous method really has very exciting end results, the way to achieve that is a little bit complicated. We have to have back and forth activities between the terminal and the Wireshark. So is there any way to automate that? Yes. In fact, that functionality is built into Wireshark. It's called SSH dump. If we click on this capture options button, see there's a option, it's called SSH remote capture, SSH dump. If we double click on it, here you need to input a remote SSH server address. So what I want to use is our UDM Pro. Then for SSH part, of course, it's 22. Then for authentication, I need to give it the username, which is root for password. Use my super secure password. Then click on the capture tab for remote interface. I want to say any. I want to use TCP dump. For remote capture filter, I want to say part 53, and I don't want to limit the packets to capture. That's it. Let me click the start button. Okay, there's no error. See, it is showing the captured packets in real time. Then to validate it from the left side VLAN 10 machine, let me dig cbs.com. Okay, in the captured packet, we see this DNS query. It's successful. Apparently, this way is more user-friendly than my previous manual approach. But under the hood, it's the same thing. Okay, this ends the video. Hopefully, you have your preferred way to do the capturing already. Thanks for watching.